This video is meant to give you a basic understanding of how to enter inventory into web checkout. Uh, and this will be per the way it is done for classroom technology support, one of the many departments uh, and checkout centers within the web checkout community on Elon's campus. So we're going to open up our login page and log into web checkout. first screen they'll give you is these are authorized checkout centers we can work within and we're going to select ours which is classroom technology support then since we're working with resources which are our pieces of equipment we're going to select resources and find resources this is the main page that allows us to either enter in new inventory or find existing inventory uh, in finding existing inventory, there are a number of ways to do it, but basically they give you the ability to narrow your search in a number of different ways based upon the information you entered for all inventory. Um, and essentially, uh, if you wanted to say, I want to find equipment that is in Alamance 305, you can do that by just typing in Alamance 305 under the home location, and it should pull up everything that's in that environment. Um, you can also enter by the barcode number if you've got that. Uh, there are a number of different ways that you can find it. Model numbers, manufacturers numbers, dates of purchase, uh, things like that. But for our purposes in entering a new piece of equipment, we're going to come down here and put create a new resource. Uh, first question they ask you is, is this a piece of equipment? And of course, yes it is, so we're going to check next. Next thing is they need a unique ID number uh, assigned for that particular piece. But before we do that, I usually make sure to check this little box, which asks, is this resource circulating? Uh, basically, it asks whether or not this piece is going to be able to be checked into checked out. All equipment in classroom technology support is permanently installed and is not circulating, so we check that box. Then we will give it a unique ID. So we're entering a speaker, so I'm going to put speaker. And this one um, is 728, and the only reason I know that is because I have previously went in and found that we have 727 entries. So this will be set speaker 728. I'll click that, and it says OK. Now, I'm going to assign it a resource type, and the resource type basically is a, a subcategory or a global category for that, and in this case, it is speakers. So I'm going to put, oops, excuse me, speaker. And now it gives all of these categories that um, fall under resource type. Now these categories are not just entered by classroom technology support. They've been entered by media services, television services, all of those departments that we saw previously when selecting which uh, checkout center we wanted to operate within. This is a global list of all of the categories listed um, by all checkout centers. For our purposes, it's an audio piece of equipment and it's a speaker so that's the one we'd select then we would select finish and there is our listing we have speaker 728 in inventory well that's basically just a kind of a a blank um, core because we haven't entered anything specific so let's click on it and now we're able to enter in specifics what information do we want to track on that piece so first thing we want to do is we want to enter in what barcode number we're assigning that's our Elon barcode number that designates that as our property and what number is assigned so the barcode number for this piece of equipment is one 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 zero zero one one seven seven and then we'll click save and now we've assigned a barcode number to it now other specifications or pieces of information that we want to enter are down here we can enter each one editing each line individually and saving and what have you but they also give you an edit all so we're going to do that description this is a speaker so we're going to put that in we're also going to take uh, the URL and I've uh, on my extended desktop I have I'm copying and pasting the uh, information directly from the website of the manufacturer and I am putting it in here for future information that can be accessed. So if we need more information on that product, we can always look at the URL, click it, and, and go directly to the manufacturer's website. Um, the manufacturer in this instance is community. The model is R.5-1. 
dash 94 Z. The serial number for this product is AAAQ1960. The vendor that we purchased this from is Audio and Light, and they're already in there because of other in, uh, inventory that we've entered. So we'll select that. The purchase date for this particular item was, and this is all based upon the um, purchase order in our database. Uh, the date of purchase for this was 11:30. So we'll enter 11:30, 2012. And then they give you other options that you can enter that you may or may not elect to enter. Uh, purchase order information, warranty information. Uh, our purchase orders are all um, listed on our departmental uh, shared drive, so we don't necessarily, and there's no way to link web checkout to our shared drive, so we don't enter that here. If we needed any specific information on the purchase order, we would just access our shared drive and go directly to the purchase orders for this particular project. Warranty information is not necessarily entered here. Uh, or, or necessary in entering here, essentially because we also will um, keep on file on our shared drive um, owner's manuals of all of our equipment and within the owner's manuals it specifically lays out what the warranty is for each item. So we uh, again don't list that here, we just utilize our shared drive to be able to access that information. Uh, replacement date, all of our equipment um, should last forever just joking. Uh, but uh, we don't enter in a replacement date or haven't yet. Uh, that's a fairly new entry in Web Checkout. They added that and we don't feel it's a, a necessity to enter in any specific date. Uh, as far as value is concerned, we did buy these and they were $751.40 a piece. And so there's our value. MAC address is another new entry. Uh, there are items that we purchase and install on campus which do have MAC addresses. We have not tracked any of that information essentially. Um, not feeling a need to track that because if there's a piece of equipment with a problem we're working with it um, you know uh, physically and so we uh, on the device itself there is the MAC address. Uh, we also have that in our programs which um, control our, our you know controlled through the control processors and what have you and so we would need to know that information there and so there are other ways for us to track what the MAC address is without entering it here. So we've entered in the, the essential information that we normally uh, enter for um, for web checkout and the ability to kind of identify and control that piece of inventory we click save. So that's the specifications information. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to come up to the admin tab and we want to go down here to where it says home location and we want to assign it a location. Where is this piece of equipment physically um, going to reside? And so what I would put in here would be um, softball field. And now it is residing at the softball field. So that's the basic process for entering a piece of information. Web Checkout also allows us, if this, let's just say this speaker had a problem and we needed to open a work order ticket on it. We could do that here on the tabs and we could create a work order to track um, who we're sending it to for servicing, how much that service uh, is. We um, also have requested of Web Checkout um, additional features that are not found in Web Checkout yet, uh, primarily uh, how to be able to attach uh, a, a PDF uh, of, say, a packing slip uh, so that the information that has been provided in a packing slip specific uh, to that item and from the manufacturer can be actually attached and assigned here so that we'd be able to find out what the previous histories of service on that particular piece are. So there, there are ways to be able to um, uh, utilize this program in ways that we're actually using more and more. But uh, for inventory control purposes, the steps I just took are fairly simple to do uh, and essentially what it does is allow us to have a unique barcode number assigned to a piece of equipment to know where it's assigned and to have specifics on its model, its serial number, 
where we purchased it, when we purchased it, and how much we paid for it. So um, that is about the, uh, the only information that is necessary for classroom technology support to be able to get a good feel for the fact that we're controlling our inventory.